When we first got the game, some of the stuff that we had to look at was uh, improving our tech, but we've greatly upgraded it, especially in the lighting department, to make uh, the darkness too. Um, light and dark and lighting in general are obviously very important in this title. We use the Evolution Engine, and this is an engine that we created uh, for Dark Sector that was released in 2008. And since we started on Darkness 2, we've been adding new lighting engine, uh, a new animation system, and just all the bells and whistles we need to make the Darkness 2. Uh, one of the things we added was uh, the ability to do bounce lighting. Uh, in the past, our engine supported uh, direct lighting only, so uh, light would shine on one object, and that would be all that you would see. The light wouldn't bounce or anything like it does in the real world. Now with our new engine, we have bounce light. Um, the light hits the walls, hits the floor, goes all over the place, and gives us a much more pleasing, realistic effect. This light can also pick up uh, colors from the textures on the surfaces. Ambient areas are generally quite dull. Uh, once you take away sort of the uh, nice dramatic lights, you're not left with much. Uh, it's often the environment can look very drab, very flat, uh, very monochromatic. Uh, we wanted to get away from that any way we could. We also look for any excuse we can to add light to the scene. Um, so here we're in a grungy New York alley. Um, we made sure we have a lot of lights on in the windows, stuff that's off of the gameplay path, things that you know will not affect your character, but will add visual interest to the scene. You lied to me, Jackie Estacado. This also played in with the look that the art director wanted of the game. We wanted a very high contrast look, which means bright brights and dark darks anyway. Um, but what we wanted to avoid was a lot of, um, was the gradients in between light and dark. We wanted you to look at a scene like this and go, okay, this is dark, that's light. I know where I can go and I know where I shouldn't go. What was the game going to look like? What was the mood going to be? Uh, how was the game going to be lit? And in a game where lighting is a character, uh, we really needed to solve that problem. So one of the other things that we wanted to do from a gameplay standpoint um, was make sure that the player knew what was dark and what was light. This also is something that you see in the comics, um, white panels and stuff when Jackie gets blasted with some light because uh, he's, he's uncomfortable. And we wanted the player to feel the same way. We wanted, when you go in the light, you can still play the game, you're not dying or anything, but it's uncomfortable. We have a fairly robust uh, color correction, color grading, uh, and post process um, that happens in our game, and I will show you how that works. So this is the, the game with uh, the post filter that I'm using right now applied, and that's how it looks without it. So when I just light the game on its own, this is what you get. And it's not super visually compelling, to be honest. Also, because it happens in real time, we can change it on the fly during the game. So if we want to, for um, story beat reasons, warm up a scene, cool down a scene, you know, if we want to make an interior different than an exterior, we just use this. And it's, uh, it, it's quick and it's easy and it gives us some really nice, nice results.